He's like, you can snort it, inject it, or eat it. Can you eat heroin? Yeah. Uh, that's that's a question I was wondering. I mean, you can eat anything you want. <laughs> if you can eat heroin, please reach out to us. <laughs> I'm going to Google God, this now. What about you fucking God. nerds we are? Can you eat heroin? <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but I think if you know off the top of your head whether or not you can eat heroin, you probably don't make it to the big bad world of podcasting. <laughs> yeah, you know what you want? You want to sous vide that. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting 600 miles to my right in his neo-Nazi fallout bunker is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? <laughs> I'm fantastic, Heath. You know, I hate to make our show too topical. I know folks listen back in the archives, and I know some people come to our show to get away from politics, but my friends, this week, the Democrats control the Senate. Donald Trump was banned on Twitter, and I choose to believe one of the terrorists who died storming the Capitol building did so by accidentally tasing himself in the penis. So 100% what happened. It doesn't get any better than that. I don't care if that didn't happen. That's what happened. It, Absolutely. Ha <laughs> it happened in my heart. It happened in my mind. <laughs> That's what matters. And sitting 2000 miles to my left is veteran guest Maskist and recently vaccinated immortal <laughs> Cara San Maria. Cara, welcome back. <gasps> Unhappy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. So Cara, how did you sneak a vaccine? How'd you pull it off? Did you like pretend to be an old lady? Because Eli and I were thinking about dressing up as old ladies. Yeah. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Don't think that'll work. Also, they're not vaccinating old ladies yet, unfortunately, as of this recording. Damn. <laughs> okay. Weirdly though, I have to tell you, I posted on social media, you know, I asked the nurse when she was jabbing me, can I take selfies? And she was like, yeah, I don't care. So I posted on social media, like a really nice note, thanking all of the tireless, you know, the scientists who have been busting their asses to develop this vaccine so quickly and, and a little blurb about science and how it's done by people and blah, blah, blah. And I can't tell you, I got a handful of like pretty hateful responses like, oh, good to see celebs can jump the line. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to unpack in that sentence. <laughs> the brain games van and came and picked you up. Uh, Miss Santa Maria, <laughs> this way. <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is a celeb. This is okay. the podcaster TSA pre-check <laughs> line. <laughs> vaccine. Right. So just to be clear, I not only podcast, I also am working on my PhD in clinical psych and my practicum placement right now is in cancer center of like one of the biggest hospitals in Los Angeles. So I see patients that are very, very sick and I do psychotherapy with them weekly. And some of them are terminal. Some of them are so sick or have issues within their medication regimen that will prevent them from ever being able to be vaccinated. So I need to be vaccinated, not just for me, but for my patients to protect them. Oh. So yeah, I'm not jumping the queue as multiple people mentioned. <laughs> also, not a celebrity, just, you know, doing my job. No one who agrees to come on our show more than one time gets to call themselves <laughs> exactly. a celebrity. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Qualification, you're filling out a little form. Like for like <laughs> okay. Instagram verification, which I still don't have, by the way. You're filling out the form for it. And they're like, have you been on God Awful Movies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Has this occurred more than once? Yeah, it Back boots you yes. like if you're under 16 and try and get the shot. Now, follow up question. If I come and give your patients, let's say three or four hearty high fives, can I get the vaccine? Like how much therapy? You might get. Therapy's just chit chat. I got some jokes. I'll do a couple of jokes. You might get arrested, <laughs> but no If vaccine. I had a nickel, Cara Santa Maria, if I had a nickel. Yeah, let's get Eli doing jokes in the cancer ward. That's a good call. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea. That'll Eli. go real well. Actually, it might go pretty well. You could it do could magic. Go well. <laughs> you could go well. You could go well. But when I bomb, I'll bomb hard in the yes, cancer ward. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate to bring the mood down from that, but um, Cara, <laughs> what are we going to be breaking down today? Oh, man. A lot of skinheads here tonight. You guys love the Nazi party, huh? <laughs> oh, no, Sorry. Eli. It <laughs> starts and it will not end for the entire show, you guys. Um, 
Yeah, we're breaking down heaven's gates and hell's flames. I told you guys this would be good. Now, oh, I mentioned this. This was you? Yeah, you yeah did this, this is my fault. You weren't there. Was it Mm-mm. the episode that you, where you weren't there? I, yes. I missed the last one you were on. Is this <sighs> when this happened? Yep. Yes. So I was <laughs> likening something. Which episode was that, Eli? They all blur together. Yeah. <laughs> was that you're a bar of, telling me. <laughs> was that a bar of Christmas? 200 something. I don't know. It was a movie. <laughs> Was that was that a borrowed Christmas? That was a borrowed Christmas. Yes. <laughs> wow. Right. So you, you can still name them. Yeah. So in a borrowed Christmas, a lot of dumb shit happens, and basically the takeaway is that the entire ethical premise of the movie is devoid and bankrupt. And as we were talking about it, I was like, "Wow, this really reminds me of this crazy play." that one of my friends took me to because she was like an evangelical when I was a kid. And I, I, it was called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. And I remember a handful of things about it. And then, of course, Eli did some sleuthing. <laughs> you've, you've seen this movie play live? You've been to this live. in a theater? Oh, this legit. I am the person in the YouTube comments who was like, this is all I remember about my childhood because it scarred <laughs> me for life. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. All right. Well, Eli... Besides what we've already heard, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the acting of porn, but miss the production quality of a haunted house one in a divorce settlement, all while being <laughs> unable to conceptualize a concept unless it's repeated in the exact same way 12 <laughs> times in a row, you will love this movie. Yeah, Mm. I think that's accurate. The memento guy would stand up in the middle of this movie and be like, repetitive. This is repetitive. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And is there anything y'all would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So best, worst, you know, metadata, YouTube description. This is my favorite. So there are a lot of different versions of this, but the one that we watched was uploaded by, quote, Library VHS Rips. And the description (laughs) that Library VHS Rips put on YouTube is, quote, fucked up Christian play where a bunch of people die and go to hell for inane reasons, including but not limited to being too busy volunteering at charities to go to church and learning about evolution from college professors. And I don't think there's a better summary of this play than that. No, there's not. No. (laughs) That could be their New York Times blurb. Yes. So (laughs) I was going to go with best worst theatrical format, but I want to add one. Uh, Kara just mentioned the, the the learning about evolution from college professors. So I'm going to go with best worst definition of evolution according to this movie. (laughs) Yes. If I remember correctly, it was Darwin taught us that there's no afterlife (laughs) via finches or something like that. Yep. Yep. That was the definition of evolution, but best worst theatrical format and Eli actually hinted at this it, it, it's a it's a play it's it's a, a VHS rip of a play <laughs> being performed at a church by a community church theater in five acts act one act one act one act one and act one <laughs> that's the format it's exhausting oh and I was gonna go with best worst YouTube comments yes we occasionally watch a movie that's on YouTube. And aside from the GAM listeners who chimed in and were as excited about watching this as I was, we got some real gold here in the YouTube comments. So I I pulled some of my favorites and I thought I would read them so our listeners know just what they're in for. (laughs) James Duo, one of the first comments on the video asks, how do I download this movie to share with others? (laughs) You gotta go to the library, man. (laughs) Here's a good contrast between username and comment. User Yogi Bear writes, nails didn't hold him. Love did. We are so unworthy, but God is merciful and mighty. He's coming back sooner than we think. And this theme was surprisingly prevalent in the comments. (laughs) Yes. A lot of people (laughs) use this as an opportunity to express their love of Jesus. For instance, user NW who wrote, Jesus, 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 Jesus. (laughs) We are a mess. We need you every minute, Jesus. And Rosebud, who, by the way, I went down a Rosebud rabbit hole to read all of this person's comments, and they are the saddest short story. But Rosebud (laughs) writes, one of their comments are, 
Crying face, 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 crying face. Not one Christian had told me how to get saved. God sent an angel after I'd gone to hell. He rescued me. Please, Christians, tell people. Oh, that's what he's saying. Tell. Yeah, tell. there's a W in there, but there's but it is. Tell everybody. Tell. Yeah. And my my favorite comment <laughs> is from a user called Paris Dre Petrosi, who just wrote, that's not what Coke is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get a church acting troupe trying to pantomime having cocaine in their system <laughs> and doing it. It's rough. Oh, that yeah. was Coke? Apparently. We'll get there. We'll get there. It was there. a bag of white stuff. I feel like they meant Coke. They I thought don't it was know. heroin. Maybe. Yeah, we'll find out. I don't think they know the difference. Uh, whatever it is, you can eat it. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was confused about. They got some interesting ideas about how drugs work. Well, <laughs> we don't. We're going to take a quick break so I can do a whole bunch of drugs while saying I love Jesus the whole time, which makes it perfectly safe. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Heaven's Gate and Hell's Flames. Hey, Kara, you ready to record? Yeah, Kara, you ready? Sure. Um, Heath, why is Eli inside your shirt? Oh, this is a Cuts shirt. What's a Cuts shirt? It's a signature buttery soft Pika Pro tri-blend tee. It's a bold new take on a classic design combining the ultimate blend of high quality fabrics. It's so perfect, GQ called it, quote, the only shirt worth wearing. Yeah, plus the Shop by Cut shopping experience gives you the power to choose your signature t-shirt. Select your collar, bottom cut, and color. Each cut is tailored to fit your lifestyle. Entrepreneurs, mavericks, athletes, podcast hosts, everyone loves cuts. They're echoing GQ. It's the only shirt worth wearing. So let's kick off 2021 the right way, starting with your wardrobe. Get 15% off your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash gam. That's cutsclothing.com slash gam for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Seriously, how nice can a t-shirt be? Feel it. Yeah, feel it. Wow, that is soft. Eli, move, I want in. What? Ah, oh, no pushing, okay. no pushing. Yep. Stop ah. it. Relax. Nice, right? Totally. All right, everybody. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for Heaven's Gate. And Hell's Flames. Ooh, yeah. So, as you know, this is going to be a morality play of sorts, warning folks about the things that keep them out of heaven. So, let's brainstorm. What keeps people out of heaven? Oh, oh, uh, being Jewish. Oh, being All Muslim. Right. Being Muslim. Cool. Yep. Right. I'll put that down. Uh, I'm. Gonna, you know what? I'm going to put it down as not being Christian. Great. Okay. Now, uh, why aren't people Christian? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Is is it because they're too busy? Yeah, busy. That's probably a big one. Let's definitely touch on that a lot. Good. Uh, oh, oh, um, maybe, um, maybe because they don't think it's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, or, or because they learned about evolution in school. Right. Oh, oh, or because they don't think God will like them. Great, great, great. Well, that seems like a great play right there. I think we're done, right? Ooh, ooh uh, one thing. Yeah, uh, Gary, what's up? If we use all of those, um, are we going to have time for like murderers and rapists and stuff? <laughs> Actually, murder and rape, that's, those aren't deal breakers in, in, in the Bible. They're, they're not? Nope. Nope. The rule is you just got to say sorry. So Yeah, but, but being too busy to specifically tell Jesus you're a Christian, that will send you to hell. That'll send you right to hell very much. Yes. Oh. Huh. Well, I, I I guess we got a movie then. Hell yeah, we do. Dave, language. No, it's it's cool. I'm a Christian. Cool. Just saved it. And we're back. And they start us off with an FBI warning about stealing the artistic property on the VHS tape that Dave made from the ninth <laughs> row during this church theater thing. <laughs> this movie was made by, I shit you not, Reality Overreach Films, because <laughs> Pulling Your Chain Productions was taken, I guess. I think I think it was Reality Outreach, oh. but, but still, I mean, that's like yeah. pretty self-aware for a religious group <laughs> that they're like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to reach out to reality, see how it goes. I don't know. 
Oh, Eli, just filling in what you want to see. <laughs> exactly. I also I have to point out, they begin the movie by being like, just so you know, we've got a version of this in Spanish, French, Russian, and uh, what's that thing called for the deafers? Uh, sub <laughs> something, whatever. We got one for deaf. They don't just, they don't use subtitles. They don't know the word subtitles. They're just like, <laughs> and it's a, for it's a special the, version yeah. for deaf people. <laughs> yeah. Also, he's literally like, also available, Miracle in Modesto, a documentary based on our 28-day crusade in Modesto, <laughs> California. A crusade? crusade? You don't just casually throw the word crusade <laughs> out there. Like, what? What's happening in Modesto? I don't know that part of California. <laughs> oh, some crazy shit going on in there? Apparently some crusading. Yeah. Cast of Monty Python walking around in the sun. Man, there's a lot of heroin needles around. <laughs> Why are there so many heroin needles on the sidewalk? Which means now it's time to introduce our narrator who starts way too far back from the camera. So he takes these <laughs> hilariously huge and awkward steps to get into frame. That's how we're going to start this movie. Yeah. And he says, while I was walking here, I realized that death comes to people of all ages. <laughs> what the fuck happened to you while you were walking here? Did you see a baby get killed on the way over and you just like kept going and then told us the story. Oh, this is good. This is good for my intro to the weird school play that I'm doing today. You know, guys, this is perfect. You know, they don't care. They don't care. I'm going to go on. Jesus. Oh, no, it's so bad. It's also blustering wind. His terrible shirt is flapping in the wind like a pirate flag. He's <laughs> he's amazing in so many ways. He has like a bitchin' stash. He does. His wardrobe is tits. Also, <laughs> he's like tripping on his lines. Like at one point, he's like, Jesus, one day... Uh, Oh, um, and it's like, dude, you know, this is film. You can just retake that. <laughs> you don't have to keep that. Take. They do not know that. They do not know that. No, this is Marlon Brando. No second takes. In fairness, he might have the best delivery of everyone in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he might be. Although there are two very good actors in this movie who I will point out oh. when we get to their parts. Oh, you're talking about the construction guys because they're fucking great. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, but really most of the people in this play, which takes place at Victory Church in Lakeland, Florida, is literally Florida Man. Yep. That's all it says in the credits. <laughs> it's just played by Florida Man. Yep. As well they should be. So <laughs> now we're going to cut to this same guy, much warmer, in a suit, introducing the church play that we're going to watch. God, and it's a fucking musical. Right away we find out. I was so, mm. so disappointed. Oh, I put that in all caps. Fuck, yeah. I forgot it's a musical. If I remembered <laughs> that, I never would have told you about it. <laughs> in fairness, though, this musical forgets that it's a musical for most of the musical. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, we're going to get mm -hmm. one song, a play, and then one song. So, And then it just plays Handel over and over and over <laughs> whenever people go to heaven. What I love is that at the very beginning, when they present to us the play, they bring up a title card sequence. And I counted the seconds, you guys. 18 <laughs> seconds that the graphic intro said four words. Heaven. Some people read slower. Gates, <laughs> hells, flames. 18. I want you guys to literally watch a clock for 18 seconds and feel how painful that is. Yeah, or just watch this movie. It's on YouTube. <laughs> and really... Really lived the experience. We're just going to put 18 seconds of silence right here into the cup. <laughs> it's excruciating. And the very beginning of the play is Jesus dramatically stumbling up the aisle of the church with his crucifix, an effect which is kind of ruined by the nine-year-old with his finger entirely in his nose. Yep. And the early bird <laughs> breakfast crowd grinning at him like idiots. <laughs> I love that they had to make his prop cross into a plus sign instead of like a T so that the actor could carry it better. He wasn't <laughs> off balance. Oh, oh. And then I, I basically had a seizure like multiple times in the middle of this play. Like there's no warning. It's the worst. Fla it's like worse than a ride at Disney World with like all the warnings posted. Oh, absolutely. I literally reached out to Tim, our social media guy, and I was like, hey, people watch these things with us. You should probably put a thing on Facebook that says epilepsy warming because <laughs> yeah. someone bought a strobe light and they were going to get their fucking money's worth three <laughs> seconds into this movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
also, at this point, I guess they couldn't afford Roman guard costumes because <laughs> a bunch of guys just dressed like normal 1980s churchgoers run on stage and start beating the shit out of Jesus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All of his lackeys, Satan's lackeys, by the way, are wearing flannel. Mm-hmm. They look like they just walked off set of my so-called life. <laughs> it's like amazing. It's like Satan who's dressed like a member of Kiss. What is that Satan? He's got a black and white face and he's wearing like a Liberace robe. He's oh. confusing. And all of his friends are like Jared Leto as Jordan <laughs> Catalano. It makes no sense. And I just want to say Husky Satan is my favorite. First of all, his only line for the first 45 minutes of this movie is <laughs> and this actor you could see he really put the work into nya you never got the same nya twice he was doing nya he was doing all his Meisner work it was very impressive yeah he gets like a 70s guitar solo of mwahaha ha and then like 19 more of these every time they do something it ends with that it's rough it was fun watching like a mob of dads in pleated dockers beat up Jesus inside of a nightclub with a strobe. Like that's, that's them doing the crucifixion, right? This is what's happening here. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And I did not realize how badly I needed overweight Satan to modern dance while Jesus was crucified. But yeah, that that was a moment I needed in my life. It was very (laughs) important. Check. So now Jesus, Jesus is crucified and he's going to get up and Show us his hands while someone sings a power ballad. Yeah, somebody else sings it. Like (laughs) when I'm watching this, I hear the voice and I'm like, oh, at least Jesus has a halfway decent voice, right? Like at least he's a pretty good singer. And then I'm like, wait, what? he's just standing there with his mouth closed. It's like (laughs) a ventriloquist act. Mm -hmm. No. So And like White Snake is singing a ballad about (laughs) getting nails driven through your hands. (laughs) Yep. Oh, and... So importantly, about two sentences into this song, they freeze the movie and they star wipe (laughs) Jesus with his own face. It's the greatest (laughs) visual effect ever created. Tenet's got nothing on this movie. Nothing. (laughs) Also worth noting, this actor is showing his palms through the entire fucking song, which is way too long, but they didn't give him stigmata makeup. So it's just like, Hands, hands to the left, hands to the right. And is this like part of the canon of the Bible? This is where they show us Jesus going to hell to chase Satan. Does that happen? No, and then he like, he steals the keys (laughs) to heaven's gates. Yeah, like Satan has like a janitor giant (laughs) keychain. Mm-hmm. And then Jesus is doing like ring magic with it, like yes. being like they're linked and now they're separate. And I'm Jesus and you're Satan. Got your keys. Booyah. This poor actor who plays Jesus has just given two props in the entire fucking show. And he's told to hold them out to the audience for way too long because, yeah, he does like first grade judo on Satan and then steals his keys and is like, got his keys. There's four more minutes in this song. <laughs> So now we're going to cut over to an old lady telling God how awesome she is. And then she dies. God, you guys, it's the start of something really bad. (laughs) It only gets worse from here. It does. So she dies. And then we see her entering heaven, which, by the way, this will be the pattern for the entire movie. Someone will talk for a second, die, go to heaven. Or hell. Or hell. Or hell. Yep. Heaven or hell. That's right. Yeah. That's kind of the point is, am I going to heaven or hell? There's like a big book, right? And weirdly, (laughs) there's a lady over the book, which is kind of progressive, but we're just going to look past that. (laughs) Yeah. That is progressive. And yeah, they just go like, I did all the things. Did I do it right enough? And she never like like shakes her head no or, or nods her head yes. She just stands there and points. Mm -hmm. And then either Jesus comes down the stairs or Satan like slinks over from like the side of the (laughs) stage Stage left. Stage left where Satan is. It's either the green slime or like Price is Right music. Like, come on down. And Jesus starts dancing down the stairs. Yeah. So that's just this whole movie. Yep. 
But it starts with the, the, this like weird Catherine O'Hara wannabe woman. <laughs> yeah. She overdoes it. I mean, she is very enthusiastic to see Jesus. I've I've seen people celebrating not being the father on the Maury show with more decorum and acumen than this woman enters the pearly <laughs> gates to heaven. Just taunting people too. Yeah. That seemed to be what she was into. I actually like this character. Like she's honest. She's going to heaven for theoretically eternal bliss, but it's mostly about spite for her. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. she's just like doing big kicks and like, power slide past Jewish and Muslim people like Luigi on her way into heaven. It was fun. Yep. I enjoyed her. Absolutely. And then <laughs> she gets into heaven and she runs at Jesus like a Beatles groupie. <laughs> <sighs> so bad. So bad. Yeah. She, she was very, very, very excited. Question for you guys. What do you think happened when Jesus went to heaven? Ooh. Did he have to like go through pearly gates? That's a great question. Did he go through the pulley gates and then come out and greet himself as the Holy Ghost or God? Because he's three <laughs> guys and one guy. Right. Because this is an even... I, I was trying to look up what exactly, like what religion pushes this? Because I thought I remembered seeing it at a, at a Methodist church, but now I'm realizing that I was probably wrong because this is... Every time you look it up, the actual kind of the company that puts this on, they just keep calling it an evangelical play. Mm. So it's kind of broadly evangelical. Huh. And I'm wondering, because, you know, I was raised Mormon. This My parents would have been pissed if they found out that I had seen this with my friend. Like, oh, is this, oh so yeah. This, was, this lies doesn't in the jive face. with Mormon, no, Mormon heaven, right? Yeah, this, this would have been right. verboten for sure. You guys have like a cloud system. There's like 12 layers of the clouds, right? Oh, there's stu drop in there's stuff I don't even get to know because I've got lady bits. Like there's mm. things I'm not I'm not. Oh, yeah, sorry, to. we shouldn't even be talking about yeah, this. Yeah, what are you doing? Come on, <laughs> I, I shouldn't underwear. know this. It's going to break my brain, <laughs> my lady brain, my feeble lady brain. But yeah, so this is an evangelical play. And so I'm wondering, what is their take on the Trinity? Is it that Jesus and God and the Holy Ghost are the same thing? Because Mormons believe they're literally like three separate dudes. All dudes, by the way. Yeah, hmm. definitely. I hmm. think I think most evangelicals are going with sort of a council of Nicaea, three in one, ghost doesn't exist, but is in belief, can't be denied. God is the all spirit. And then Jesus is the manifestation, sacrifice of the lamb, Abrahamic law kind of thing. Quantum dead cat. I think they're yeah, going with that. It's, it's that. Yep. No idea. <laughs> I don't know. They haven't read the book, so I don't know why we would even have 60% of them admit to not having read the book. And at least a big percentage of the 40 that say they have are lying. So absolutely correct. Yeah. So this movie that we watched is not exactly the same script that you saw as a kid. Kara, this is a different one. I don't, I, it's so hard to know because I thought I remembered a couple of different scenarios. So I don't know if there are like adaptations or if people put some poetic license into it. I just remember it being terrifying. And even as a young child who was still developing my sense of kind of identity and trying to figure out what my ultimate beliefs were, I remember thinking in my head, like, this is some fucked up shit, right? It's pretty <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, and it is just getting started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were other versions on YouTube that were longer, actually, which is, now that I think about it, terrifying, because that means this is like the cut down, like <laughs> tight 72 minute one. Wow. Ugh, oh. Yep. Yep. All yep, right. Yep, yep. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and keep talking about this. <laughs> um, how about the sexy robot who learned how to love while killing people? Saw it already. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Kara. Heath and I are just trying to find something good to watch. You know, because we're stuck inside for the winter, but everything out there is all the same. Ooh, ooh, how about show about cave people, but with porn right in the middle of it? Meh. I heard it's only like, okay. Oh. Uh, well, why don't you guys try Acorn TV? Well, one, because they're way too small. We'd probably oh, need several. No, Eli, acorns. Eli, Eli. Acorn TV is a streaming service that's rooted in British television. It has a rich catalog of exclusive award-winning series across genres, including mysteries, dramas, comedies, and so much more. Oh, yeah. The British are way better than us at art. That sounds great. So what kind of stuff is on there? All kinds of stuff. From production to performances, the series you'll find on Acorn TV are exceptional because they're cleverly written, visually striking, and feature renowned actors like David Tennant and Thandie Newton. Wow. What do you recommend? Well, how about one of the most underappreciated comedies of all time? 
slings and arrows. It's amazing, funny, and it's based on Shakespeare. Ooh, that does sound good. Okay, but it's British TV. Do we have to pay in like gold bullion or swans or something like that? No, that's the best part. You get thousands of hours of new refreshing content on Acorn TV for a fraction of the cost compared to most streaming services. It's just $5.99 a month. And can I watch on my Apple TV? You sure can. Escape to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use our promo code AWFUL. That's A-C-O-R-N dot TV code AWFUL to get your first 30 days for free. Nice. I'm in. Are we sure there isn't anything else on the other streaming services, though? Um, there's a period romance drama. Oh, nice. That uses sexual assault as a plot device with no warning. There it is. Yep. Okay. Let's stick with Acorn. Stick with Acorn. Hi, uh, Jesus. Hey, Kyle. What's up? Uh, we've got some new heaven entries. We were hoping you could just greet them at heaven's gates. Yep, sure. No problem. Great, great. Uh, why don't you come on in, Karen? Hi, Jesus. Uh, hi. Oh, oh, we're, we're, okay. We're, we're hugging. Okay. Oh, I can't tell yep, you how hi. long I've waited okay. for this day. I love yep. you so much. Thank, thank, thank you, Karen. Uh, I, I am very grateful. I love you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you die? Well, I was on a mission in Africa. Oh, cool. That's great. You know, so often I meet Christians and they weren't doing Listen, we were with... given Bibles to starving people and letting them know about your glorious word. Bibles, great. A and food too? No, no, just Bibles. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right, well, uh, you probably want to get to heaven, right? So uh, time's a-wasting. Let's do it. Actually, Jesus, heaven is eternal, so you Thank can Thank you, going. Kyle. Thank you. But I'm sure Sarah would like to get it's going. Karen. Right? Yep, Karen. Karen wants to see your family and, uh, I don't know, probably see Shakespeare or something like that, right? Ugh, boring. I just want to stay right here with you, Jesus. Great. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, anything, infinite knowledge and all that. Go ahead. So are there any black people up here? Yes, Karen, there are black people in heaven. Darn. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, we were just finishing Act One. So now it's time for Act One. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. And we are going to watch Cara Santa Maria's first acting gig because you will never <laughs> convince me that you didn't play one of these parts as a child, Cara. You will never okay. convince me. <laughs> I didn't have to play that part because I was that part, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you were, quote, Flying high on drugs. <laughs> oh, I loved flying high on the drugs. <laughs> it was so fun. Crystal method acting. Yeah, it was. Okay, so in this part, there's a dude. There's a pedo. He's a pedo. Mm. We can call him a pedo, right? Pedo man. Sure. And he's hitting on these girls who just left a party and are talking about boys and drugs. Mm -hmm. And he's legit hitting on them. It's weird and gross because they are legit teenage girls acting this part. They must be, what, 14, 15? Oh, absolutely. And yeah, he yeah. introduces himself, by the way, by saying, Dave's the name and drugs are my game. Which, <laughs> uh, I immediately bought those business cards. Dave's the name, drugs are my game. And he's like 42, <laughs> maybe 43. Oh, absolutely. Yikes. And, they're, and he's like, hey, ladies, and like putting his arms around them and they're like giggling. It's really uncomfortable. And then he tries to sell them drugs or he does sell them drugs in a white little package. Yeah. Which I'm pretty sure is because drugs are white and Christians just think they come in white bags because they've seen the, the movie. <laughs> oh, for sure. And this is the part that I'm so ex like confused about. I want to know what this drug is. So you're, the YouTube commenter said it was Coke. I figured it was heroin because he's like, you can snort it, inject it, or eat it. Can you eat heroin? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a question I was wondering. I mean, you can eat anything you want. <laughs> I mean, will it do anything? You can rub Coke on your gums. I mean, it right? doesn't really, it doesn't fuck you up, but it numbs your gums. If you eat cocaine, I feel like it's going to do something too. I don't, I, I well, because it's an anesthetic. So I don't think you want to swallow cocaine because then it'll numb your 
digestive tract, right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps. So, but heroin, I think you can eat heroin. I don't know. If you can eat heroin, please reach out to us. <laughs> I'm going to Google God, this now. What a bunch of fucking nerds we are. Can you eat heroin? <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but I think if you know off the top of your head whether or not you can eat heroin, you probably don't make it to the big bad world of podcasting. <laughs> yeah, you know what you want? You want to sous vide that and you get a nice <laughs> medium rare heroin brownie. Heroin. Yeah, I don't think anybody <laughs> eats heroin. I mean, I don't know why you would eat any of these drugs because they don't do anything. Like if you if you snort it or you or you inject it, it like works better or you can smoke it even. But now I'm thinking of heroin as an edible, and I really want that to be the case, right? Like you eat one heroin gummy bear, and you're like, ah, these are really weak. So you eat three more, and then you overdose and die, and fucking. <laughs> well, like like these girls do in this fucking. Quentin Tarantino way. has to stab you yep. in the heart. Okay, so do you guys understand the part where he's like writing their names down in his Palm Pilot? No, <laughs> he has a. Palm... Was that a Palm Pilot? Oh, mm, it's absolutely. a Palm Pilot with a stylus. Oh yeah, it is. There's no. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and like, are they trying to parallel his little name of underage drug users with the, or his little, his little list with the Jesus's big book? Is that what they're trying to do? That's exactly what I they're doing. Harry, yeah. yeah. you yeah. picked up what they were putting down. I love it. And they do a tight shot at one point where she's snorting drugs out of her Clinique, like blush compound. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. So I need to funny. talk about every second of this cocaine pantomime. <laughs> so first okay. of all, she introduces it by saying, trust me, my mom does this all the time. So fun house. What? Yep. <laughs> Second of all, she might as well be stirring the cocaine into stiff peaks. I mean, she's like, she's there's crosses and knots. An overhead shot would show like, 12 large pockets of cocaine, none of which are in anything resembling a line. <laughs> Somehow it's like a mousetrap situation. There's like a Rube Goldberg device, a bowling ball rolls down and then lights a candle and it shoots the cocaine into her face. It's it's impressive. At one point, yeah. she literally holds the mirror in a V and sniffs at the corner because I'm pretty sure this actress thinks that the reason you use a mirror is so that you can like get it all to run down the center. <laughs> Into your nose. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not just like a mirror on a table. It's her like makeup compact. So is yeah. she also snorting makeup? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's some blush in there. That's good stuff. <laughs> I could see the Clinique <laughs> label on the back. I'm sure they'd be pissed to find out that they were featured in this play. Right. But this is a Christian movie and they've just done drugs. So they both instantly overdose and die. <laughs> well, the weird thing is the first girl, it's very clear what's happening. She's like complaining of a headache the whole time and then she does more drugs and then she's like, no, but something's really wrong. My head really hurts. And the other girl's laughing at her the whole time and then she falls to the floor and then I don't understand and then the other girl's just dead. The other girl's like, right. oh, we're dying? Yeah, sure, peer pressure, we're dying. <laughs> Heath, Heath. Yes, what, what do you mean when you write jeans made of snow pants? <laughs> okay. <laughs> these jeans that they're wearing, these two girls are wearing the like beautiful 90s jeans that had oh, that like, like Jinkos. They had so much thickness, almost Jinkos, yeah. one of them. And they, they've got like the pads to them. There's so much layers of thickness. To <laughs> oh, man. I missed the 90s. Back when pants and the cover to your wagon were made out of the same damn material. <laughs> <laughs> that whole decade was great. Like starting, I don't know, not right away, but like 93, we just all decided that especially for middle school boys, you were allowed to wear clothes that were six sizes too big. And 12-year-old Heath was fucking psyched about that. That was right in my wheelhouse. Wait, seven sizes too huge. Right, Perfect. Now, Heath, don't lie to the listeners. Did they make clothes 12 sizes too big for 12-year-old Heath? Because I've seen pictures they, I and found I don't think they did. A, a couple of clicks bigger. I was in the, there was a husky section. <laughs> Had to go with your mom to the husky section. <laughs> They'd carted you on the way in, just checked your weight instead of your birthday. So <laughs> now the girls arrive in heaven. And to be clear, we're about to watch this movie, Damn These Two Children to Hell for Doing Drugs. Oh, my God. It's so bad. It's so. So at this point, you know, this is only act 
one B, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's pretty clear. Let's let's look at the evidence leading up to this point. The girl mentions that mom does this all the time. One of the other things that we left out, but that she mentioned multiple times, is that her father recently died. Mm-hmm. Right? She keeps talking yeah. about the death of her father. So basically, this is a child in pain who is self-medicating in the only way she knows how because she doesn't have a lot of social support or scaffolding in her life. But because she didn't accept Jesus into her heart, she's just straight up going to hell. That's correct. And more importantly, they open with a non-theologically sound statement, right? The Christians don't have anything in their rule book about whether or not you're allowed to do drugs, right? They don't like drugs, but that's not a tenet of their thing. You're allowed to do a big old line of coke as long as you love Jesus. (laughs) So they're going to open with something that's not just wrong morally, it's wrong according to their own moral system. (laughs) They might as well be dying of the overdose and being like, I have doubts about whether a theistic worldview is reasonable. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so bad. And when they get there, right? So they die, Mm -hmm. we think. (laughs) And then they get there and their first line is, where are we? It's so bright. It's beautiful. And it's like, no, honey, it's foil. It's decorated (laughs) in foil. It's not beautiful. It's foil. Uh, It's decorated in foil (laughs) and it is covered in I'm going to go ahead and use air quotes here. Angels, which are (laughs) um, people who volunteered to stand still in the background of this 70 minute play the entire (gasps) time. I feel so bad for them. I'm surprised not not one of them lost consciousness from locking their knees. You know what I mean? (laughs) Allow me to take you on a journey called watching the angels in the background, because the second time I watched this, all I did was watch these extras stretch and scratch and walk <laughs> off stage and walk back on stage. Oh, they're like the worst guards for Buckingham Palace ever. It's the best. <laughs> so the girls go up to the Book of Life lady. And again, this is a pattern that we're going to repeat over and over again. And they say, is my name in the Book of Life? And it's supposed to be her shunning them or turning away. But unfortunately, dabbing came out after this movie. <laughs> so it just looks like the guardian of the gates of heaven dabs at them and they're sent to hell. <laughs> Psych, I'm not an angel. Now watch me whip and watch me <laughs> nay I don't know what we're going to do a different one each time. Dabbed you. Oh, and, and this is, again, this is the first time we see someone get dragged down to hell. So Satan runs out, has to catch his breath because he had to run from stage left. And then is like, that's right, kid. Remember, drugs are who. Sorry, one second. Satan was drinking some mango nectar off stage. Uh, <laughs> drugs are the way to... Oh, I shouldn't eat that Taco Bell. Drugs are the way into my domain. All right. Satan's going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Runs back off again. So that means Satan just like hangs out in heaven a lot. I know. It's really weird. Waiting to do like a low level prank at the beginning of somebody's not yet hell experience Ooh. for eternity. This is great. Question based on that observation, do you think that Satan and heaven and hell decider lady are work friends like, you know, the UPS guy? Like when he comes in, oh, like, oh, guy, you think they're just like, oh, what are your plans this weekend? And she's always like, oh, you know, nothing. <laughs> I don't think she speaks. <laughs> well, sure. Satan helps her get on Tinder. <laughs> hey, no, let's we'll, do, we'll take it seriously. Just get. <laughs> oh, she's like, like she, five pictures. She's like 2020 in those awful match.com ads. Have you, exactly. you guys been seeing those on, on Hulu lately? <laughs> no, I've been. <laughs> We're no. like, oh, yeah. Satan matches with 2020 and they go on a bunch of dates. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Her helping Satan get on Tinder would be a lot more fun. They, yeah. they missed a lot of possible scenes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this, they, they, they stayed pretty focused in one horrible direction on this play. <laughs> but yeah, the, the children get dragged to hell for doing drugs, which again is not against the rules of Christianity. It's so gross. Can, yep. can we just take a moment? I mean, I know we're going to do this over and over and over, but to reflect, <laughs> to reflect on how fucked up the premise of this play is and the fact that there are children in the audience. Yep. Oh, absolutely. This, this play is aimed directly at the children watching it. Not the adults, the children. The best version is going to be the last people we see go to hell, but it is absolutely aimed at like ooga booga booga kids better accept Jesus fast. 
And speaking of which, now we're going to cut over. Let's to- talk about the same thing again. Yeah. Great. Let's <laughs> fall on that like 11 more times. But this time we're on an airplane, which I'm going to go ahead and guess is a Boeing right now based on the pattern. Of the movie. <laughs> God. And it's like the improv team doing the airplane with folding chairs. <laughs> Fucking worse. This is, I have to admit, the one sort of scenario where I'm on board with these evangelicals. Like, I feel like they chose, they chose correctly. Truth is, you know, a stopped clock is right twice a day. So like <laughs> in, in this case, I think the fact that we're aligning has nothing to do with our morals and it's just random circumstance. But the guy who is the bad guy in this scene is a legit douche. He's, such He's yeah. so douche. unlikable. He's and I feel so bad for his wife, who's like kind of nice. Her bangs are out of control, though. Oh, fan. Ooh. Oh, she like looks armor. like she raided the fucking Capitol building to steal Nancy Pelosi's pantsuits. She's a fantastic <laughs> piece of work. <laughs> she used like an entire bottle of Aquanet on her head, like mm-hmm. just for this play. Absolutely. She's got those perfect 80s. Like, how did they make their bangs curl up and down and left and right all at the same <laughs> time? You know what I mean? Somehow omnipotent epic. curls coming off of the front <laughs> yeah. of her face. But yeah, what she reveals to him as they're sitting there on their flight is that while he was off golfing, she got saved by the Lord. And I just Mm want to say I can confirm that a lot of Florida women sneak off with Jesus while their husbands golf. So yeah, that that tracks. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yes. And none of these people in this entire movie, but especially in this scene, nobody is off book yet. Mm -mm. They've (laughs) thought about their lines once ever. So there's a few times where like, (laughs) <laughs> he's supposed to interject in the middle of her sentence. So <laughs> she starts talking. She's like, so uh, Aunt Jean, I had a thought about that. <laughs> you dare to talk Maybe. to me about... <laughs> there, there, you had a thought about Aunt Jean? Go ahead. Sorry, what? Go. You go. Three, what? Aunt two, Jean, two, one. one. Aunt, Aunt Jean. Jean. What's Aunt Jean? <laughs> no second takes. <laughs> It's the quality of scripting we're getting here. But yeah, he, he, and the moment she says that she's discovered Jesus, he pulls a wad of ones out of his pocket and starts thrusting it at her, telling her that money is God. Money is God. Yeah. What is that? What is that? The literal quote, God, I'll show you God. Money is power. That's the quote. What does that even mean? And it's such a fascinating insight into Christian worldview. And I know this is the 280 second episode of this show and we've seen this literally hundreds of times now but it's so telling to christians that they're like hmm what would i do if i wasn't part of this religion i guess i'd worship money and power right yeah money and power are what i would worship if i wasn't this religion but they do worship that in their religion that's the irony right is that the religion is all about money and power especially evangelical religions yeah well they're this guy's about money, power, and Hindu Buddhism, Muslim, all the other religions. <laughs> right. that yeah, he's a anything meditator. with meditation. <laughs> oh, and his Walkman. Yeah. Don't forget about Thank the Walkman. You. We need to talk about this Walkman. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Walkman. Is it a Walkman or a Walkman? Walks in your head. <laughs> it's, a, it's a walk person. <laughs> it's a walk person. Thank you. Thank Big you. It. Good. Thank you. It's a walk person. He just canceled. He wa- <laughs> 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 he's apparently learned meditation from all the evil religions recently and he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna take out my meditation tape and his wife says you can't use your walkman yet (laughs) it's like like it fucks up the airplane radio (laughs) walkman yeah that's very good was there airplane mode before airplane mode like was there no electronics allowed on the airplane It's battery. Walkman is batteries. It's a battery. Nothing. Yeah, there's there's no no Bluetooth. There's no, yeah, there's no like antenna. It's very strange. But this is, this is kind of the nucleation site for their fight. Right. Like when they first sit down, they're sort of getting along, I think. And then he tries to use the Walkman and she's like, she's like, husband, you're embarrassing me. Like she's so offended (laughs) by his interest in using his Walkman. And then he just gets pissed and starts like verbally abusing her loud, you know, so that the whole airplane can hear. And declaring himself and money to be God. A very natural reaction to don't use your Walkman during takeoff. (laughs) Yeah, he literally says, well, I learned meditation. I'm a deity now. That's what I learned from meditation. I sat still silently 
God and me and money are all the same. Trinity, I'm evil. Yeah. From meditation. Yeah. And, the and all the people Walkman. in the audience oh, maybe are it was going. a Walkman with like AM, FM. And then it has a radio <laughs> signal. There you go. All the people in the audience are literally going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Makes and that brings yeah. down an airplane. <laughs> yeah. The, and the moment he says that, the plane crashes. So again, this will be the entire movie. Now they're in heaven. And I just got to say, we all wrote it in our notes. I was so excited to watch this woman give her husband the it's not you, it's Jesus speech. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm glad this one turned out how it did. I have to say, though, before they go to heaven, it's the fastest airplane death I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Like, they're like, oh, no. And then they're just dead. <laughs> like, it's so weird. I don't think it works that way. But at this point, I think for most people, we sort of knew what was going to happen. But for most people who are just warming up to heaven's gates and hell's flames, this is where they realize that this entire play is a bad SNL sketch. You know how, like, it should have ended a really long time ago. One other thing I have to point out, you mentioned this briefly earlier, Kara, but... Every time someone gets to heaven, they play the hallelujah chord, right? <laughs> yeah. And the first time they do it in the play, Jesus comes out and you're like, oh, yeah, that's beautiful music. Like, that's part of our historical tradition. But by the 19th time they do it in the play, it might as well just be a trombone out of breath. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> and I think in one or two of them, Jesus doesn't even bother to show up. He's like on a piss break. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, I'll find him. Come on, you heard the fucking trombone. Just go in. Obviously, it's at the top of the stairs. I'm (laughs) drinking nectar. Jesus is outside smoking. Fuck, I missed my cue. Ah, It's fine. It's fine. We got 19 more. (laughs) (laughs) I do enjoy this going to heaven moment, though, because again, yeah, the husband who meditates, he's supposed to be the bad guy, but he is the bad guy. He sucks. Oh, yeah. He's a total douche. And the wife is just like, Oh, man, like, I don't know if you're going to get into it. You know what? I'm in. Fuck your face. Who cares? You're awful. So I enjoyed that part. Yeah, yeah. This was like the one vindicating, like, okay, they got it right. But again, stopped clock, you know? Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, okay, I get it. Good people, bad people, Christians, non-Christians. But have you ever wanted to celebrate the death of a family with two small children? Well, then buckle up because our next scene is a family on a car trip. (laughs) <laughs> and knowing that everyone we meet is going to die immediately made each new scene a mystery for me. I feel like they missed the opportunity to do like fun and like throw us off about what the deaths were going to be. But it was pretty fun. It was pretty exciting. Yeah. How many car crashes are there in this thing? Like they yeah. really ran out of material quickly. So it's a very boring and preachy <laughs> version of Final Destination. But I wanted shit to get crazy, right? Like the kids in the backseat, he's like, what's this radium? Oh, no. You know? <laughs> They could have had fun with it. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Oh, oh, this is when we get introduced to how actors drive on stage in this play. Because for some reason, there are plenty of chairs, by the way. In almost every other scene, people sit in chairs. But for some reason, anytime somebody's in a car, they stand? Mm -hmm. Like Fred Flintstone? Do Christian people have stand-up cars? (laughs) (laughs) And this actor, his car mime is fantastic. I don't think he's ever been in a car because (laughs) he apparently thinks the steering wheel is a single handle somewhere five feet in front of you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this scene is probably the best. Maybe. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to pick the best worst in the whole in the whole thing. But just the exposition, we should call it, (laughs) is um, it's. It's deep. It's got layers. It's oh, so... it's the the exposition that they're in a car so that they like they they could just they could just start the scene sitting in yeah, you know sitting. a they two by sitting. two as if in a car, but they had to walk and mo- like as if people would be like, "Where'd the car come from?" Though, no. so they like walk out onto stage as if they're in the car, and then they stop in the middle in the middle of the street and just never move again for the rest of the car ride. <laughs> That's asking a lot of these two very small children who obviously don't know how to act. But oh. when I when I speak of exposition, I'm more talking about the scene where mom's like, where dad's like, did you enjoy church? And mom's like, yes, it reminded me of our dead dog. Yes! <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> He's like, yes, yes, I remember. She used to run out to the car and the one time I didn't notice her, bam! (laughs) But all of that gets blasted from my mind when dead delivery kid says his line. So again, 
these aren't good actors, community church theater. I get it. But then the kid in the back seat speaks up and he's like, hey, dad, thank you so much for letting me take Jesus into my heart. I'm so happy. So very, very happy. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. It's amazing. And literally then dad or mom, I can't remember, turns to child and says, it takes a lot of courage to go forward and give your life to Christ. He's saying this to a seven year old. It doesn't take any courage for a seven-year-old to do exactly what his parents told him to do. (laughs) It takes zero courage to do that. Son, you just played the world's easiest game of Simon Says. I'm proud of you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Like, no courage. I hate this so much. It's the literal worst. Really wanted the other kid to be like, oh, see, now I actually decided to be a Methodist based on what was said. Shut the fuck up, Cindy. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing. We don't ever hear. I guess it's just assumed that the younger daughter already somehow got there in her intellectual journey because the older son is the only one that they speak to about this. Is it's just a given that younger daughter is already Christian? (laughs) Or is there a cutoff? Is there like an innocence cutoff? Yeah, isn't there like an age of automatic innocence where like if you die when you're three you don't have to accept jesus but if you die when you're seven you it matters i think it it depends like in the mormon church it's eight you don't get baptized until you're eight yeah and there's actually a huge problem in mormonism with that because kids like get guns out of their dad's closet and murder their sisters and because utah is a fucking crazy place state Mm -hmm. mormons will be like oh there's no no one's at fault because it doesn't nothing matters before you're eight years old there's all sorts of crazy shit that goes down because of that theology that's so crazy but then on the flip side it's just as crazy to baptize a child of all of their you know pre-birth sins their original sins when they're born, because then it's as if they are making decisions from the time that they're like three weeks old. Right. (laughs) Like as if they have any conscious awareness. I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure my son has shat in my hand on purpose at least a couple of times. (laughs) So you can get them while they're babies. So he's going to hell basically is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. to hell. Oh, I baptized him. Are you kidding? (laughs) <laughs> Fucking Pascal wagered the shit out. I baptized him. I made him a Buddhist and a Muslim. I got all of them. He can't talk yet. I am covered. I don't think that's how it works. Wait, so what's the algorithm for this play? If you just like hedge on everything, do any of those things cancel other things you out? You lose automatically Mm-mm. by hedging on everything. No, yeah, I, that's I sneak not how. behind that lady. Misdirection. You just have to at the last second say, Jesus, I accept you into my heart, blood and soul, blah, 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 blah. Save me. Exactly. You got to guess one at the end. Yeah, you can't just hedge on all of them. You don't know. <laughs> That's like betting on every spot in roulette. That doesn't mean you win. You always win. No, you win in this this canon. (laughs) All right. (laughs) So we're done with the Christian family. Now we're going to cut over to a non-Christian family. Wait, wait. Are we done with the Christian family? Because they haven't even gone to heaven yet. Well, no, because remember we meet the non-Christians first. Yeah. They both, yeah, we they, they're parallel. Yeah, they're parallel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So, so now that we're done with the Christian family, we're going <laughs> to cut over to the non-Christian family. No, this is very good storytelling. We're doing it correctly like they do in the play. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a parallel. I really wanted this family to be the exact same family, but just Jewish, right? Like the exact same lines, except they're just like, how'd you like Temple today, Moishi? Oh, so much, Dad. <laughs> Crackle, but what are they? I mean, it's clear that because they're going to send this family to hell, they had to get two really unlikable people. So they basically cast Alex Jones as the father. <laughs> Did you guys yeah. notice? This guy is Alex Jones. <laughs> yep. And some dumb twat son. He's so irritating. At one point, he literally, go, like, they're talking about how mom goes to church all the time, that dumb cunt mom. And he's like, yeah, religion is for old people and girls. <laughs> literally a line. That's yep. literally a line. He's also supposed to be a high school basketball star, and he could not look less like a high school basketball <laughs> star. <laughs> look, you're working with that actor. I get it. Say chess team or something. <laughs> At one point, this guy mimes shooting a basket and his wrist breaks from the action. He's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
it just makes no sense. So, so, and it's also clear that they had to make the cute little kids go to heaven. And so they're like, how can we put actors in that are going to go to hell that you won't feel like emotionally upset about? Right. You know what I mean? Because we know, we know what's going to happen. Right. And we know how fucked up it is. So they sort of soften the blow by making the people that (laughs) go to hell unlikable. (laughs) They soften the blow by making the kid look like Eli who goes to hell. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. They're like, you guys are okay with glasses going to hell, right? And this entire audience is like, boo, Boo, fuck fuck glasses. glasses. (laughs) Yeah. Burn them in fire forever. (laughs) And again, they talk a lot about money. Mm -hmm. That's like the whole shtick here is that they're like, I don't like God, but I love money. And the kid literally says, I love that expensive gift you got me last (laughs) week. (laughs) Because 100%, that's how people talk. The whole writer's group. generic gift that you gave me last week. Speaking of our backstory. I love gift. Remember to write this later. (laughs) Also, they also do the procrastination thing where he's like, oh, I was going to go down to church and, you know, give my life to Jesus today. But I was just so busy. After watching 282 Christian movies, I cannot stress enough how many Christians think people not accepting Jesus into their life is just an issue of not being a good time. What This means that it must be true for some of them, right? Some of them must look back on their lives and think, oh, you know, I wasn't saved because I just hadn't gotten around to it. <laughs> right. I just had that long to-do list. Should have moved it to the top. <laughs> Shit. Too late now. Guess I'll spend eternity in hell. <laughs> a vision board with like, you know, <laughs> some some basic normal stuff. And then like Jesus in the corner, small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, weird. Yeah, it's like re- recovering the couch, you know, <laughs> right. starting a juice cleanse. Yeah. We'll get to Jesus. <laughs> but then, so they they talk about their lives that are not terrible or evil in any way, but aren't Christian enough. And then they get in a car crash. So to be very clear, this movie showed us a family, showed us small children, and they're dead now. And this movie is about to be like, don't worry, this is a good thing. Because the Christian family with the small children, the ones we're supposed to like, they start doing a fucking mandatory touchdown dance outside of the gates of heaven. It's super weird. And they use the line, this is what we lived for. Yeah. Death. Do you guys remember that? Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, this is everything we've ever wanted is to die young and go to heaven. <laughs> yeah. What? what? Yeah. Good thing I got smashed by a car before I stopped being Christian after reading some books in the whole Bible again through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. so weird. And here's the thing. Like, so we know then that these that evangelical Christians who watch this movie legit look forward to death which is strange. And my question is, what if the car crash happened yesterday Oh, and the seven-year-old hadn't given his name to Christ? That'd be a child going to hell. Child going to hell. Would they have dragged him off to hell? Really? Absolutely. Are you kidding? 100%. That's why they dragged two children off to hell earlier in the movie. They were like, they make that point 19 (laughs) times more in this movie. You might be confused about whether or not we'll drag children to hell. We are absolutely going to, not this one, but we will drag children to hell. That's, We're opening with dragging children to hell. And Uh, I should point out that the gates of heaven, every time they've opened, Jesus has come out and given a very half-hearted hug to whoever has just gotten into heaven. But this time, he brings the dead daughter with them. So to be clear, this movie is now saying, hey, family that just died, look, it's your daughter I killed. She's been up here alone without you. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) And if this happens yesterday... They do that, and then they're like, ah, no, but your brother's going to hell. Trap door. <laughs> Suck it. I've got good news. 75% of you will be coming to meet your dead daughter. <laughs> oh, my God. Trap door would have been so good. Or like, ooh, ooh what about like church, carnival, dunking booth, except that they fall into <laughs> like lava? I love it. Love it. Yes. <laughs> If you think we can't stage a production of this show with a church dunking booth full of lava, you do not know how much it costs to put up church production. Decent chance the Satan guy couldn't ever hit the button on the dunk tank. And they were just like, this is, it's too long. We can't. He always misses. This is bad. But yeah, that family runs off to heaven. And so now it's time to watch the bad family burn in hell. Except the not bad family, the exact same family. Yeah, the identical family burn in hell. 
And again, they're like, the father begs for his son. He's like, please don't, you know, I know I haven't been good, but please don't let the devil drag my son into the pit of fire forever. And the angel just dabs at him. I wrote in my notes, Bible God is a villain that the Mandalorian should free a space town from. (laughs) (laughs) It's bad. No, like, these are the exact words. We've never given our lives to Christ, so our names aren't in the book. So can we just reiterate one more time that these people literally believe that no matter what you do in the world, unless you say these words, I give my life to Christ. All you have to do is just say the fucking magic words. You're going to go to hell. Say the magic words, go to heaven. Everything else, it's a wash. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> it's a wash. That's the worldview of this play and a large percentage of the country and of our the entire government. world. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Also, did um, Luchador Darth Maul Satan add <laughs> sparkles to his face for he this did. scene? He glittered it up for this particular <laughs> scene. I was very impressed. <laughs> that was an interesting touch. That's what he was doing on a smoke break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he was just hanging out with Angel Lady. All right, yeah, let's do. Let's uh, make me over a little bit. You got sparkly stuff. Cool. Oh, I'm not gonna look weird, am I? You promise I won't look weird? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay, so they really just like leaned in on the problem of evil. That's what happened here. They basically, they were saying like, yeah, a child went to a lake of fire for eternity. Really, solution of evil, that kid was evil. That's why we did that. That's the point of this movie. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's time for one more quick break. But first, let me give more Act Ones the hard sell. (laughs) Are you still confused by the concept? Are you still confused by the concept? Are you still confused by the concept? (laughs) Don't worry. They'll explain when we come back for literally five more Act Ones in Act Three. (laughs) Hi, I'm Kara Santa Maria. And I'm Eli Bosnick, bidet skeptic. As many of you know, one of our sponsors here on God Awful Movies is Tushy. Oh, what's Tushy? Kara, he stole no, one no, point. No, no, you left the gap. I'm allowed to, to claim an unused one point in the event of a two second the... pause. That was definitely a two oh second pause. God. It was. Right. Yes, Shh. it was. I have no idea what either of you are talking about. Morgan, send the two second pause. <sighs> All right. The Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment is here to level the playing field. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. An affordable bidet? No way. Not all of us have National Geographic money, Kara. Yeah, some of us have very expensive mango nectar needs. Well, that's the great thing about Tushy. It attaches to your existing toilet. It requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and it cuts toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in a few months, especially in Eli's house. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Okay, that does sound good. So how do we try? We'll go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer just for our listeners. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. hellotushy.com slash awful. You know what, Kara? Call me convinced. Nice, as you should be. I'm going to go grab some Subway, you guys. You want any? What subway? What subway? Damn it! Doesn't count. No, 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 no. They're not a sponsor. It does too. Count. It counts because they were that mentioned does not in the ad. There was not a pause. It either. absolutely counts. You know what? Never mind. Heath, where are we? Yeah, we were just driving, and uh, oh, I know what happened. Damn it! What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Eli cut my brakes again as a prank. Again? Yeah, he does that. It's his thing. Uh, it's his thing. So we're dead. Yeah, looks like it. I, I, I guess. Heath it, and it, Wright. Oh. Hey. I am St. Peter, your final judge and jury, and I shall oh. read your sins from the book of life. Right. Sure. Wow. Really thought this wasn't going to be a thing. I would. Yeah, dude, me not neither. see that coming. First, the sin of lust. You, Heath and Wright, were a viewer of pornography. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> dude, 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 ah, dude, don't, that, don't worry about it. Everyone watches porn. With the following <laughs> titles. Titles? Do, I mean, do the, do the titles really matter? I feel like yes. we, can just, we can just say that it's... Sexy I, stepsisters go wild. Oh. that That's probably a mistake. I, I don't remember specifically I that, am that Peter, title. the guardian of heaven. All like. of my knowledge is perfect. Right. 
Yep, sure is. Um, hey, you know what, uh, Kara? Why don't you go first in front of me in line, and then I'll go right after that. You want me to go to hell first? Well, no, not. I see. Not that's not what I meant. But like, I see what you're saying. Next, so incestuous sister sex, volumes one through four. It, that, it was. It came. It was, came as a box set. So he, like you, you don't can get to, you can stop explaining the title. So cool. Yep. Want to feels like stepmoms out of their pantsuits. Is there a, okay? Like a I don't know. There's got to be like a private heaven sin reading room. Maybe I could request that. Like like at the TSA, it's like a private. No. Thing. Yep. <sighs> Not much point. Pretty sure I'm going to hell. Red hot sisters triple X. <sighs> Pretty sure I'm already there. Poop on my chest. You're my sister. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. And now it's time for a very important lesson. How tolerance gets you sent to hell. (laughs) And we're going to start by meeting a young couple dealing with that. And they might not be equally yoked. That's a big problem. (sighs) Oh, I was rooting so hard for them to end up in hell because of a hand job here. But no. No, it's it's that she's into new age stuff and he's a Christian. <laughs> Wait, where are they in this scene, by the way? Because they're sitting on like folding conference center chairs, but there's a weird soundtrack of like seagulls and waves. Are they supposed to be on the beach? Yeah, they're, they're at a very weird conference center. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Possibly doing hand stuff, but maybe not. <laughs> yeah, nope, sadly not. She's into new age stuff and we're going to establish that early when she's like, oh, this is so romantic. My psychic told me there was a romance in my future, which again, through the Christian worldview, his response is, Psh, that's stupid. Everyone knows there's a space wizard who knows the future, but he doesn't <laughs> answer your questions. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, not you. That's not what my psychic meant. <laughs> that's, that's what I was hoping she would say. And she's, you know, She's just like one of these classic sort of people that you see driving around in blue cities that have that bumper sticker. What does that bumper sticker say? Coexist. Yeah, Yeah. that's her. She's just sort of saying, you know, I've just been doing a lot of studying and I feel like there are a lot of cultures in the world and they all sort of have their own approach and they're all equally valid. You know, it's an interesting, (laughs) it's an interesting complex world out there. And I just, you know, I tolerate all these beliefs and I take what I can from them. And he's like, stupid. You better hope you don't die right now because (laughs) you will go straight to hell. Fuck you, bitch. (laughs) Jesus is the light. (laughs) This, this play is turning to us as she's saying that being like, can you believe this asshole? (laughs) I think we could all agree. She deserves to burn in a lake of fire forever. Am I right? (laughs) Oh, you can believe whatever you want to idiot. In fact, His direct response to her, and I love this so fucking much, quote, it may seem okay to believe whatever you want, but it's not good if it's not the truth. And I just wrote in my notes, yeah, movie, we agree. We just don't agree on what the truth is. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Nope, but now she literally gets killed, and him too, by a very (laughs) racist moment in their thing that didn't have to be. They did not need to put a gangsta bandana on the person who walks over and shoots them for no reason. They needed to code racism into their church play. So they were just like, hey, Jim, you're going to go over and shoot them. Put on this bandana so everyone knows, even though you're not a person of color, you're portraying a person of color. We want our audience to think that you're a person of color. You know what? As I go by, I'm going to be like, I shoot you and my name is Jaime. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Because at this point, it's clear that every person on the stage, every person in the audience, whether they're going to heaven or hell, whether they are angels, whether they are musicians, every single person is white. Yes. Yep. Every person. Mm-hmm. Up to this point. Yes. Up we're, to this we're point. We're going to get an exception point. and it's not going to make it better. <laughs> no, no, it's not. So yeah, they're in heaven and they're in heaven so that Jim can win their argument. <laughs> and so like, but to be clear, they just got murdered. Yes. yes. They were just like brutally murdered and they just sort of skipped over that part. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. But it is absolutely him winning the argument. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was like, they get to heaven. He's like, didn't want to die. But, you know, this really does hammer home my point. Like, you're going to hell and I'm going to heaven right now. This is, I mean, I'm right. Watch what happens. Like, she's going to dab me and she's going to like send you to like uh, hell. Wait, is dab good or bad? Hey, angel lady, (laughs) is it, what do I get? I'm going to heaven. Fuck your face. (laughs) Fuck your face. Again, (laughs) 
wooey girlfriend lady, she's like, oh, I was supposed to be reincarnated as a tree. And again, this play is like stupid. Uh, we're going to go play harps in the sky till our final battle with the Antichrist <laughs> as part of the army of sword mouth Jesus. So... <laughs> Yeah. Read a book. Think realistically. So yeah, go go hug some fucking trees in hell, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, I have a legit question given the state of our nation right now. Sure. What do you guys think the Venn diagram of insurrectionist, seditionist assholes who attempted a coup on the Capitol building Circle. and people who believe in this shit looks like? Circle. I thought you were going to say and the cast of this movie and I was going to say circle, yeah. <laughs> circle. Circle and circle. Circles within circles within circles. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah lady gets dragged down to hell and now we're going to meet two new children mm -hmm. Ray who doesn't want to go to youth convention because he's going to tell his friends about Jesus tonight oh right yeah that's how they set him up to be the good guy yeah but kind of the bad guy you're you're not sure he's kind of the bad right you're not sure at the beginning yeah because it's like are you going to come with all the rest of the Christians and do Christian things asks Christian girl <laughs> and then he's like no I'm going to go hang out with my ethnic friends <laughs> right. Oh, and just as I was getting bored of this movie, I get to watch these actors do gangster voices and I am back in baby. And yeah, so my favorite oh, actor right. so far, well, there's two. It's like my favorite good actor is the Asian guy. So finally, there's a person of color. And the Asian guy is a legit good actor. I don't think he's putting on a voice. I think he's just like doing his thing. And okay. he's good. I mean, he's a bad guy because he's, you know, not white. But he's good at playing a bad guy. <laughs> but then white guy in the puffy jacket is like, yo, dog, I'm a gang <laughs> member. What it's word? Phenomenal. <laughs> the fact that he didn't tell me to cut out smoking at the end of this performance is all that was missing. <laughs> So they, they drive around, they race a train for a second. We think that's how they're going to die, but they don't. Then they go to the rough side of town where they mess with Snake's girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, what is this? This is like okay. West Side Story. <laughs> it's so amazing because, again, this play was very obviously written by white people for white people to perform. So when they start to, like, flirt with Snake's girl. Who's like, Snake's girl's like 48 years old. By absolutely. The way. Yeah. No, she is. She is the angel in a slightly shorter skirt. But yeah. Snake comes out and he goes, yo, quit messing with my girl. That's not nice. And I absolutely need all dangerous gang members from now on to speak in iMessages. Just like, yo, dog, when you invaded my territory and started selling crack on my streets, that really hurt me. You know, I felt like, listen, see, this is my intervention. This is my <laughs> intervention at work, Eli. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, oh, that's not nice. And they say, who says? And he says, my friends. Smith and Weston, except he takes the gun out too early. So he's like, my friend Smith and Weston. And then he realizes that the reveal of the gun is supposed to reveal that point. So he just sort of gently waggles the gun and then <laughs> shoots them and they die. Oh, sorry. To, to be, be clear, clear, my friend Smith, this gun, it's the gun that I will. Now I have it. It's also Wesson. It's fine. It's Wesson. <laughs> it's a Smith and Wesson. Oh. But he clearly says Weston. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is weird because it's this is Christian people. <laughs> they know the names of guns, right? Yeah, everybody, in, everybody in this, this audience has a gun. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now gangster boys are at the gates of heaven and they talk to each other about literally how the crazy people who scream on street corners about Jesus are right and we should have listened to them. Yeah. And like, I'm so confused by the algorithm because it's so fucked up beyond belief that I don't know if Jesus kid is going to go to heaven or hell. But then I quickly realized, I don't think he actually died. <laughs> oh, no, I think he yeah, I think he lived. No, he yeah. lived because when they get shot, he has this moment where he's like, oh, my biggest regret about you dying is that I didn't get to change your religion. Just say Jesus. Oh, ah, yeah. fuck. Beans. So close. <laughs> so the gangsters show up in heaven. Oh, right. And the kid's like, yo, dog, I can't believe you killed me. I am so gangsta. What <laughs> word? <laughs> and then they both regret out loud that nobody ever turned to them Christian. The Asian kid explicitly says, I've never heard of any of this before. Nobody ever told me any of this. I don't know what any of this is. This isn't <laughs> fair. And they're like, Yep. Yeah, I was really hoping we'd get like a tribe in the middle of, you know, the Amazon jungle somewhere showing up after them. Just like, what? What the, what the fuck is Jesus? 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they get dragged <laughs> off after the gangster kids. And they're like, oh, too bad. You weren't lucky enough to be born in America. <laughs> but yeah, they are dragged off to hell. And now it's time to meet a sad lady. And just for clarity, this movie has gone from drug dealers go to hell to sad ladies go to hell. And she is the other person of color in this play. And she is going to kill herself because her boyfriend broke up with her. Yeah, no, I think her, her life is pretty rough. I think that's what they're really making clear. Like, so this woman, is not just the first person of color, the only black person in the play. Mm -hmm. And she's smart and sad. So she's, this is the one who's like talking about evolution, although they just, they don't get it right. She does. She goes, <laughs> she goes, oh, Mike, why did you leave me? Also, before I kill myself, evolution says that life ends at the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so basically the takeaway from this one is that people with severe depression go to hell. Got it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Got it. Yeah. So then she <laughs> takes the bottle of like barbecue marinade that's supposed to be a beer <laughs> slugs a bunch of it and then smashes up some amoxicillin on the table and snorts it all and <laughs> dies no she takes pills yeah she takes two of her pills and dies apparently she was being prescribed <laughs> pool cleaner <laughs> I can't with Eli like here's the thing that people don't realize is we make notes well, maybe they do because you guys talk about your notes all the time. <laughs> but we make notes and usually you add to the notes. You, you may or may not read the other people's notes. So I'm like sort of reading. I don't think Heath had made his notes yet, but Eli had. And for whatever reason, Eli, maybe it's because I was really tired and like annoyed at this movie at this point. <laughs> but when I read apparently she was being prescribed pool cleaner, I lost it. <laughs> like I out loud laughed in the dark in my living room. Because <laughs> she did, she died after she took three pills. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, that was some hydroxychlorine right there. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to take these with food. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> so then of course, you know, she dies. She dies, she yeah. goes to hell. We know this is going to happen. Of course, the first black person in the play goes to hell. Her reaction when she gets to heaven is fantastic because she gets to heaven and everyone's been like, oh, where are we? Is this her heaven? This woman stands up, takes one look around and goes, no! <laughs> <laughs> and she commits. Okay, so at this point, I know I said that the Asian guy was the best actor, but she is by far the best actor in this play. She is fully committed. Her screams like made me think that she was being murdered all over again. <laughs> or was at least aware of what the play she was in was. Exactly. Yeah, she, right. It's like the moment where she had full existential clarity, but it happened on stage in front of everybody. And she was like, Ooh, I'm involved in a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been an extra on SVU. <laughs> <laughs> and then Satan literally says these words as she's being damned to hell. Evolution, I guess that means I don't exist. I'm just somebody's imagination. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I've taught evolution like many times. I was a biology <laughs> professor. <laughs> I don't remember Why are that. Are there still demons then, Kara? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah, that's like not a chapter in any of the books <laughs> I've read. You don't cover the existence of Satan in your biology classes? <laughs> <laughs> Evolution. I think you should. I'm going to bold claim. I think you should. I think you should just in the middle of it be like, oh, by the way, everybody, the devil is a nonsensical concept that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. Now, flagellum. <laughs> let's talk about him. <laughs> Literally, it's like Darwin's conception of evolution is blah, blah, blah. But Lamarck, he thought Satan was a figment <laughs> of their imagination. That's what evolution really means. <laughs> As you can see, this amoeba has horns and goat like hooves. That's right. <laughs> Hooves. And yeah, she gets dragged off to hell. Yep. Who would have thunk? <laughs> so now it's time for the stars of the movie and Heath's favorite <laughs> actors, the plumbers that have oh, these guys haunted Kara's nightmares for years. <laughs> <laughs> the two comedy characters of this play. And they're going to begin by sitting under a piano, which is, they're pretty <laughs> sure is securely held up there. <laughs> I have to tell you, though, I appreciated them as a little bit of, like, respite. There was something about them that was so bad, it became, like, it worked a little bit. 
Comes like back the, around. Comes back comes, around like home <laughs> movies. Like the first guy. So they're, pl- they're, what are they, construction workers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the first line of this scene is the guy going, I get off my back, you goof. Yeah. <laughs> you Who goof. Says that? You guys remember that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and then he's scared that his boss is going to like beat the fuck out of him for saying the word goof. And goof, he's like, I yeah. said sore back and tooth ache. Tooth. <laughs> what? Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they go on to do, I don't know, 15 minutes of improvised comedy shenanigans that the people who made this play were conv- This These were the stars of the fucking show. They gave them so much time. Oh, absolutely. They get more time to talk about what they've had for lunch and the fact <laughs> that it is gross <laughs> than many of the people get in the entire play. But I have to say, I appreciate it. I don't know why. At this point, I think I needed this in my life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I wrote my notes. Guys, I'm so nostalgic for my wife can't cook jokes. It hurts. It hurts. Oh. And so I don't I, I don't want to get ahead of what happens here, but did they go to heaven? They do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is why this is so fucked up because these two men are horrible people. Terrible. Horrible people. So like the whole thing is they're making fun of their wives for being ho- bad cooks. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, women's only role is to slave away in the kitchen and prepare meals for their husbands. Mm -hmm. And at one point, this is my favorite. The guy, the guy is like peanut butter and ketchup. (laughs) That must mean my wife is pregnant. Thank you. I have so many questions. the, The other guy goes, how many kids is that now? And he's like, I honestly don't remember. He doesn't know how many children he has. And that slays the audience at this theater. That was the biggest, that was the only laugh line that I heard laughs from the theater was like, (laughs) I don't know how many kids I have. Whatever. I'm going to die in a second and leave them here on earth. (laughs) Yeah. And go to heaven. Yep. Because I'm a good man. Yeah. Oh, wait, that doesn't matter. Why would being pregnant make you confuse what uh, presumably jelly and ketchup look the same in your pregnant stupid lady eyes like <laughs> no what? he's trying to make the point that when you're pregnant you have weird cravings i think uh, i don't think he's trying to make the point that she's too stupid to know the difference between ketchup and jelly is she i found it mystifying oh, okay. Absolutely yeah mystifying. the first the first thing i jumped to was it means she's pregnant because it's like you know like peanut butter and pickles or like she's she's got weird cravings so she must think i would want to eat this uh, Oh, okay. Peanut butter and pickles sounds good. I actually called my wife (laughs) who has been pregnant into the room and showed her this clip. And I was like, what does this mean? And she was like, Christian movies are stupid. And I was like, yeah, Christian movies are stupid. (laughs) Please don't ask me questions. (laughs) But what's what's so important about this is that even though they're like, hey, got bada bing, I can't say liver and Limburger cheese and oi, ba bum. Christian guy convinces peanut butter and ketchup guy to say the magic words right before a wall collapses on them and murders them. I mean, immediately beforehand, he's like, come on, just say Jesus, Jesus, circle, circle, dot, dot. Now I have a cootie shot. And he does. <laughs> let's just, you know what? Before we do that, let's just walk over to this wall of anvils and we'll say the Christian words. <laughs> but the best him. part is that before he agrees to do that, he has some legitimately insightful questions and comments. Oh, like at yes. one point he says, this all t- seems too simple childlike really and I'm screaming at my laptop like yes exactly how come nobody else can see this? yeah and his buddy affirms that he's like oh yeah no the book says be like a child don't think too much about it and he's like all right well you know the wait, book wait, says, wait. don't think too much but don't I have to like actually believe the words I'm saying and the guy's like yes you do doesn't matter repeat after me Go. <laughs> Really? Because I had questions like three seconds ago. How could this be a heartfelt? Just repeat after me. You're Christian. (laughs) But yeah, the wall comes crashing down on them. They're in heaven and they do a touchdown dance. Oh, yeah. Like they aren't at all sad about leaving their families behind. Mm -hmm. Like they're only happy that they're dead (laughs) and potentially going to heaven. But honestly, at the beginning, they don't know. And do you notice that in this particular scene, they leave them hanging for a while. Like God is a legit reality TV producer. It's that scene (laughs) where they take the moment and they just pan back and forth between like (laughs) their faces and Jesus's face and the lady at the book's face. (laughs) And they're like, Ooh. Maury, can we have the, the results of, no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Are we? I mean, to be fair, 
I think there's a good argument to me be made that heaven becomes not paradise if those two guys are allowed in. <laughs> So that right. is the paradox of this film. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is like the good place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this whole play is a good place prequel, and that is canon. Yes. Oh my God. These guys are Jason Mendoza and Eleanor Shellstrop. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's time for us to meet our final group of hellbound people. And this is really the most poisonous message the movie is going to send. It's a mom and daughter at a shopping mall. Yeah. Uh, and the daughter apparently goes to church without her mom, but her mom is too busy to go to church because of her charity work. No, she really, she literally says that. Daughter's like pissed at mom. Why can't you come to church with me more on Sundays? Well, I'm just working so hard to put food on the table and I just work really hard. And the only days that I have is on the weekends to give back to starving children. So I just can't. But you know what? If you ever do something real special in church, let me know and I'll be there. <laughs> right. It's like she's a legit, really good mom. Right. I'm a good person. I'm a good mom who dedicates my life to others and feeding my child. Sure hope I don't end up in a lake of fire forever. Meow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid's super judgy, by the way. She's like, oh, you always say that. Like, well, do something interesting at church and I'll fucking be there, kid. <laughs> she might as well be like, the soup kitchen again? Those yeah. assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they get hit by a train or a bus or whatever. I don't know. Everyone just gets car noise. Ah! But they, <laughs> they get hit by a train. And the mom's like, ooh, uh, any chance you got a plus one, kid? <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about why this scene is in the play, okay? Because this is funny as fuck. But keep in mind, the reason that this is in the play is so that all the little kids who do believe in Jesus and went down to the altar last week when they did this play will freak out because the message here and what we watch happen on stage is the devil is going to come take your mommy away and you'll never see her again unless she comes to church with you on Sunday. And they know that's a terrible message. They know it's an immoral worldview because if it wasn't scary and terrible, they wouldn't have put it in their fucking play. Oh, for sure. For sure. And this is the part that really paralleled for me my own experience as a Mormon. Because even though there's a lot of big differences in the worldview that I grew up in and the evangelical, you know, ideas that are espoused by this play, if you can call it that, I'm always saying play in air quotes, I remember very clearly. So my parents got divorced when I was six. My dad got remarried when I was like seven or eight. And I had some real issues with my father's wife. I never called her my stepmother. And I remember one day when... I learned about the different levels of heaven in the Mormon faith. And we had sort of mentioned this before, that there's the celestial kingdom, the telestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, then there's outer darkness. Oh, I thought that last one would rhyme. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this concept of being sealed to your earthly family. So when people get married in the temple, they get married for eternity. If they have children, those children are part of that eternal package. But if you're like, get divorced or there's some sort of change, you need to go back to the temple to get sealed to your family. So basically, there's all these weird like logistical rules. So when my parents got divorced and then my dad got remarried to some rando woman, the calculus of this religion is that when we die, I will go to the celestial kingdom with my father and his wife, not my own mother. And what? we will all be bathing in God's glory. But my mom, because she was a non-believer at this point, she had left the church, would be hanging out in the terrestrial kingdom. Oh, no, no, At this point, she was still a believer. She just wasn't married. Ooh. So she would be hanging out in the terrestrial kingdom. And although I had the privilege and power to go visit her on her earthly heaven that was not in God's light, she couldn't come visit me. What? And I was like, this is pretty fucked up. You got like fucking family court in Mormonism. Yes. Where your mom got you every other weekend in terrestrial heaven, but she's only yes. got the PlayStation 5, not the PlayStation Infinite. Yes, <laughs> that is what I learned. And I the parallels between that and this little girl who's a kind of a bitch going to heaven <laughs> and mom who is like this dedicated public servant going to hell is everything that is wrong 
with this worldview. It's so immoral. And so, and I love that you're also stuck in the celestial kingdom with dad's new wife, Carol. Right, just for for all eternity as you walk through the Garden of Eden, it's just like, hi, Carol. Hi, Kara. That's a weird shirt on you. God damn it, Carol. Hate so much. Oh, We're stuck here to forever. Be <laughs> to be clear, I know you just made that name up, but legit. Oh, is your name Carol? I'm, That's so get funny. Get out of here. No, it's even better. It's Karen. It's Karen? <laughs> the best. <laughs> I'm a maker it's of worlds. Little- <laughs> and and the people who follow me on Twitter probably know this or on Instagram because no lie, my father sent me a birthday card. Did I read this birthday card to you guys recently? Oh, I saw it on your Instagram, but this yeah, needs yeah. to be into the canon of God awful movies. Yeah, I'm going to um I've got to find it in my phone right now so that I can be a hundred percent clear about what my father wrote. A birthday blessing from the Dalai Lama because there's a picture of a llama on the front and she's female. I don't know. Who cares? That's the printed part. Here's what my father writes. And my birthday was in October. This is your birthday card. This is my birthday card that he sent me through the mail. So Karen signs it. Hope you have a great B-Day and a wonderful year. Love, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Gross. Dad signs it. Don't get too stressed when Trump wins. (laughs) You will live through his terms just as I lived through Obama's. (laughs) Make it a great year, whatever comes. Love you, Dad. Fantastic. That's my fucking That's, birthday card. I, I think oh. about that literally <laughs> twice a week. Kara, if you set a number, a Patreon goal to give me your father's number so that I can phone call him <laughs> and record it, our patrons will hit that number. They oh, will I'm hit sh- that dollar amount. When is his birthday? Because fuck your face, the birthday card has <laughs> got to be sent back. We are showing up as a singing. We're going to show up with face Joe Biden token. and Kamala Harris doing a barbershop together. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to tell you, one of my other favorite dad posts, I have to give this to you too, just so that it can also become part of canon, is when I interviewed Ian Harris on my podcast. And, you know, we talked about atheism in the interview because it's Ian Harris. And the quote that I tweeted at the time to promote the episode was, quote, many atheists by nature are punk rock. I talk nerdy with Ian Harris on atheism and his work being a skeptic comedian. And my dad responded on Twitter. And this is what he wrote. Just remember that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess the Christ. (laughs) I didn't respond. I didn't respond. And then he replied immediately after, one minute later. To himself, of course. No, yeah, to himself. He wrote, (laughs) He wrote, love you, honey, with an exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> okay, now, and I love, I love that some of the comments on it are like, what the fuck? My, fe- my friend Trayvon, who I highly recommend you follow because he's an amazing guy on Instagram. He wrote, ha, 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 ha. Think about how psycho that actually sounds. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But Carrie, yeah. you realize you did just give me access to your father's Twitter. Okay. I already, before we had this conversation, I own business cards and the website I will fuck your dad.com. No, you can't ruin my life like this. It's already already bad enough. I really wish that wasn't real. (laughs) This isn't a bit. That's a real thing in Eli's life that he has. Oh, no. And now it's part of your life. And now it is part of yours. Forever. Oh, Eli. No. It's going to start cutting the brakes on cars. It's all. And happening. then what are all the websites now that redirect to my website? So skin books. Many webs- <laughs> I love skin books. I'll fuck your dad. Yep. There's a few already. <laughs> there There's was another bunch. one in there too. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So yeah, little girl's mom gets dragged away to hell. Jesus very awkwardly comes and collects her. He's like, hey, how about we get you off to paradise which you'll be able to enjoy without your mom who you just watched get dragged away to hell like i can't sleep when my son coughs in his sleep the idea that anyone would be okay with their mother being dragged off to hell and enjoy paradise is insane that's part of heaven according to this canon yes watching your mom go to hell for eternity is the first thing you do in heaven But here's the really fucked up thing. They only did that in this scenario. In every other scenario, the person was saved first. And the person who ended up going to hell had to watch the person get saved. And that was sort of like part of their punishment. In this scenario, they took mom to hell first. And the girl watched mom go to hell before she was saved. They intentionally switched the order to make this one extra fucked up. Did y'all notice that? 
you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, though, I think this is more honesty. I think this is like truly <laughs> how you feel. Like this is the sky cake thing. This is yeah. you being like, yeah, there you go. See, I made it for spite. I enjoy watching the fact that you didn't make it. Yup. Absolutely. They're like, don't worry. You'll get to watch your cousin, Steve, who blocked you on Facebook. Go to hell. <laughs> so now it's time for the closing musical number. Another Jesus staring at us during a power ballad. We also get to see the altar call here. Oh, God. And during altar call, there are two extras who I absolutely need to talk about. The first is mullet guy who definitely needs absolution just for that haircut. <laughs> and the second person is the girl who is ugly crying during the altar call, <laughs> who is obviously like hyperventilating. And I'm like, OK, really? You're wearing a Cosby sweater. What sins did you commit? Come on, relax. <laughs> Relax. No, she's crying because she knows that her mom's going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she's crying. So then the host comes out. He's back in the wind and he says, uh, if you said that prayer with our audience just now, you're saved. Within 24 hours, tell three people about Jesus. <laughs> it's like a chain letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jesus the pyramid scheme. Uh, oh, and this is the point where I realized the reason he was thinking so much about death in the intro to this movie is because he shot his stand-up in a cemetery. <laughs> He's like walking amongst <laughs> headstones talking about Jesus. Like how much more on the nose could this awful thing be? Well, they could have all right before they did the altar call got killed by like a bomb or something. That would have been <laughs> that would have saved the movie for me. <laughs> Nuclear explosion clip. Just all right. I want everybody to. <laughs> yep. And then one guy is left just like taking wagers on who went to heaven and who went to hell. <laughs> all right. I got odds on crying girl. I think she did some fucked up shit, huh? <laughs> Huh? She's the Green River Killer. Who's got a bet? <laughs> All right. Well, that's the theme. That's the lesson is just like yell Jesus at the last second and hope you don't get bombed and killed before it. So like, what do you think? Pascal's wager. We love Jesus real quick. Yen? Uh, no. <laughs> End of podcast. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's going to do it for heaven's gate and hell's flames but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to celebrate america's very smooth transition of power with a trump movie next week so eli what's on deck well heath as you hinted at next week is the final week of donald trump's presidency and so to celebrate there's a little movie i've been holding back for almost a full year now it's the author of gramps goes to college Donald James Parker's pro-Trump <laughs> anti-BLM movie called Hearts Are Trump. It's what? God, I, I am so grateful that you guys did not invite me to join you on you that on episode. You on next week? <laughs> Tag teamed you in. No. I just tapped out. <laughs> like that lady realizing she's in heaven. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that to look forward to for Eli, Kara, and Noah, we're going to bring episode 282 <laughs> to a merciful close. Huge thanks to Kara, as always. Really quick, uh, where can everyone hear some more of your stuff if they don't already know? Apparently, you can just go to I Love Skin Books. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty much all you need to That'll know. That'll get you where you need to go. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out by leaving us good reviews and by sharing the show on all various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, The Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus, available in all the podcast places. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slonick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Kara Santa Maria and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House Clothes. Breakfast Club. Animal House Clothes. Eli Bosnick, Heath Enright, and Kara Santa Maria went to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Dorsey went to heaven. 
for banning a neo-Nazi terrorist from Twitter at the last second, just in time. Mark Zuckerberg did not go to heaven for being Jewish. Kara's dad had a really, really weird week on Twitter. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> I will fuck your dad, dad. <laughs> Oh, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that, that's the start of the show right there. <laughs> fuck you guys. Welcome back to God All <laughs> Movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tushy yet. Sorry. Eating yogurt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now is a reasonable time instead of Eli trying to drink mango nectar right in the middle of the last <laughs> thing and then being like, hey, I'm watching on my Apple TV. <laughs> Get your cameras out of my house, Ethan, right? Get your cameras out of my house. Oh, no. Are we going to smear shit all over the walls again in this Not one? Not this time. <laughs> How did that go over? Is, uh, is that what happened last time? Yeah, they loved it. No, they right. didn't. Yeah, I loved it. This particular company actually like specifically emailed and was like, yeah, do a lot of shit jokes. It's cool. We want that. <laughs> Amazing. All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.